Maelstrom News fans, just a day or so ago, a bunch of employees from Walmart were arrested by the police and charged with disorderly conduct, un unlawful gathering, what have you. You see, what happens, what, what's happened here is that a lot of Walmart workers have gone on strike. There have been massive protests due to the actually below poverty line wages, abuses of employee rights, and the general all around criminality of Walmart. Now a lot of people take in the streets. A ton, a ton of people in at least three cities have gone on massive protests against the company and what it's doing. A bunch of them in New York City went right up to the head guy. They brought a, uh, a petition full of God knows how many names and attempted to bring it to the head. And what happened? They were refused entry in the building and arrested. Some other ones went to the hotel where a woman who was a high ranking official in Walmart was staying and they protested there and they were arrested. Now think about that. The police aren't alleging any acts of violence. They're not alleging any acts of vandalism. Literally, they were arrested because they tried to deliver a piece of paper with people who signed their names asking for the company Walmart to pay at least $25,000 a year and to ensure the rights of employees in the workplace. But this was too much. That's too much. Think about what that says about capitalism. A livable wage. We're not talking something glorious or as Fox News say it's supposed to be hard so that way incentivizes you to move up because we know what kind of advancement is available in Walmart, right? When everybody is a part-time employee, we're talking about people being able to survive. That is considered too much for the bourgeois. That's too much to ask for. And the second thing, to protect their rights. That's too much to ask for. Merely having the rights that you're already guaranteed be protected is something a company doesn't want to do. But we're supposed to believe that this would be totally different in an anarcho-capitalist society. Right. But my point remains. The view of the bourgeois is that you, as a worker, are not even worth enough to survive. Literally. You are not even worth your own rights guaranteed to you by law. These people whine and complain about their rights to run their business, their right to profit on a lot, a lot of uh, lofty Randian type and capitalist notions of rights. But your right as a human being to have a minimal amount of risk of being killed on the job or to just be paid fairly because you have a vagina is too much to ask. This is the face of capitalism. This is the mentality of the entire philosophy of capitalism. Your rights as a human being, as a living, breathing, conscious entity, is worth less than the supposed right to make money. The social construct, the, the theoretical concept of property ownership, the theoretical right to earn profit, things that were complete inventions by people, they don't naturally exist. They're not natural rights because money, profits, and the concept of property aren't naturally occurring. They're something people created. These complete artificial constructs and the supposed rights surrounding them are worth more than the material reality of human life. Let that sink in. When you think about capitalism and all its claimed benefits for people, think about that. Now, Walmart is the largest employer in the country. 
They employ more people than everybody else. This is not some small, you know, semi-large chain just screwing people around. This is the largest one doing it. The whole idea of capitalism, the whole pretext is human rights are worth less than property rights. Capitalism isn't based on the rights of human beings. It's based on the rights, the supposed naturalistic fallacy based rights to own property and to collect money. This is what's not understood by proponents of capitalism. They quote, don't see this. They only see that by owning things, you have a right. It's a lot like the tremendous hypocrisy of uh, pro-life people. You have a right to not be aborted, to have life, but you have no right to food. You have no right to water. You have no right to ed education. You have the right to life, but not the right to live. Think about this, that this is the true face of capitalism. This is the genuine, real deal. Now let's take this even further. Let's look at this in the context of a global, of a global imperialist situation. Look what's happening in Syria right now. The U.S. is, beyond a shadow of doubt, along with the U.K. and other smaller countries, are forcing a war on the Syrian population. There can be no denying this. There's literally nothing to suggest that this is somehow a legitimate rebel movement against the government of Bashar al-Assad. There's nothing. There's literally nothing that would support that idea. The, f the fraudulent claims mount up every day. We know Al-Qaeda is there and is a huge force in the FSA. We know radical Islam, the we kill you for not believing in us, force is there and doing everything. We know mercenaries are there. We know jihadists are there. The very thing that we have been told like the, for the past 10 years was coming to kill us every day be, you know, since 9-11 is the United States force. There is no legitimate claim by the FSA that they are somehow freedom fighters. I could go on and say a lot more to describe the FSA, but that's not productive at this point. Think about the US funding them. All of it, just to get rid of the government of Bashar al-Assad and install a puppet. Again, for the same reasons, for profits. There is not one iota of concern for the people of Syria. This is all about taking the resources of the country merely for the profits of a few global elite. So when we look at how badly the ruling class treats these people, just for wanting to strike against Walmart, just for wanting to protest against Walmart, just for wanting to hand a piece of paper asking for their basic rights and the right to make enough money to live. Look at how they're treated for that. And then we can begin to see a little bit more clearly how they could do the things that they do globally. From this, we can understand why 3 million people were murdered by imperialism in Iraq and Afghanistan. For what? For the energy resources of Iraq and this probably never will be captured mineral resources of Afghanistan. In the old days, everybody knew that empires were being built. Everybody knew that's what England was doing. When they sailed around the world, invaded the people and took it over, there was no pretext. They just did it. And everybody knew what was happening. And no one really cared. 
The age we're in now, it's happening right now, but it's given a nice gleam of we are bringing democracy. It wouldn't take a genius or a Noam Chomsky or some kind of educated elite to notice that the only thing that has been, ever been brought to these people is pure misery. This entire thing has been a fraud from the beginning. The very basis of the United States has been a fraud since the beginning. There has never been a concern for human rights ever. Ever. Even the bloody Constitution was written directly, explicitly for the purpose of property ownership, not human rights. And we can see that. All you have to do is, is look at the substance of the Constitution itself and see that it was written for bourgeois right, not human rights. Think about this. The next time one of you, a person who supports the FSA, talks about how bad the Bashar al-Assad government is, usually, 99.9% .9 of the time, without giving any argument for that. Think about that the next time you champion the FSA and talk about how supposedly great they are. Think about that. This is the people you're supporting. This is what they're doing. I don't have to repeat any of the old horrors that have been carried out by the FSA over the last two years. You already know they happen. You closed your eyes and pretend they didn't exist. As long as the mainstream media, the bourgeois-owned media, the Western-owned media, just pretends a reporter from Al Jazeera wasn't raped by an FSA commander, it didn't happen. As long as you just pretend the FSA aren't going through and murdering Christians, then it never happened. As long as you can shut your eyes and pretend these crimes aren't happening, you can feel good about supporting the FSA. You can feel good about supporting the very people you spent 10 years hating because of 9-11. Remember that the next time someone from another country turns around and says they don't care about 9-11. Remember that when somebody from another country turns around and mocks the people who died on 9-11 and mocks the United States on 9-11. Say, someone like me, who frequently does that. There's a reason why the rest of the world doesn't care about, hum about American suffering anymore. It's because of this. You stand there and you support the mass murders, the wholesale genocide of countries under the pretext of trying to help people when your actions are literally worse than the supposed crimes, whether they actually did or didn't exist, depending on the case. And personally, as a Canadian, watching my pathetic excuse for a prime minister stand there clapping and applauding everything that the U.S. government is doing is sickening. And knowing that if we actually had the resources, if we actually had a war economy like the United States, we'd be jumping right on board with that. If we only actually had the funding and the resources necessary, we'd be all over that. And we would be just as bad. Think about that, my fellow Canadians. Think about that. The fact Stephen Harper said he would have gone to war in Iraq had he been around when the war started. Think about that the next time you want to X your ballot for the Conservative Party. For all the crimes that the Liberal Party did actually commit, for going to Afghanistan, which was a crime in itself, at least they never expressed the intent to go to war in Iraq. Think about that the next time you stand up and say support the troops. I don't support the mission, but I support the troops. Think about that. Think about what ungodly amount of blood would be on our hands as there is on the US, the US population. And yeah, I place a lot of the responsibility right on the population of the United States. Because no matter what happens, they never do anything. 
the government goes to war in Syria, and it's going, it's going to do it. They are going to do it. They've done it every time. Regardless of how much the population doesn't want it to happen, no matter how many opinion polls come up, and they say they don't support these actions, the government still does it. And the people who did it are never held accountable for what they did. Never are the top generals thrown in jail and prosecuted for what they did. Never are the ruling elite who drove for this ever jailed for their participation. The leaders of the country who drove the country right into war, never are they held accountable for what they do. You know, I keep hearing this notion of Thomas Jefferson, you know, how about holding the, the elected officials, the elected officials accountable for what they do. And that this is the greatness that America came from. And yet I never see anyone actually do that. Is it about time that us in the first world, specifically the United States, actually take a good look at ourselves and realize we're not doing anything? That we are allowing these things to go on? And not one of us is stepping up and doing anything. Because then life might get difficult. Hell, even more difficult than it is if you're probably already poor. And you just won't do anything. I'm reminded of the old hippies. You know, the people that were anti-war in the 60s and the 70s and whatnot. And I look at them today and they still do nothing. Even with decades of experience, they still do nothing. But we're supposed to believe, you know, we're supposed to feel sorry for the American public. We're supposed to feel sorry for the first world public because we didn't want it to happen. Our leaders did that and we didn't want them to do it. But what exactly did we do to ever stop it? We didn't do anything. There is no poor us. If we didn't want it to happen, why did we sit back and let it happen? Because then our lives would have gotten a little bit more difficult. Or maybe even a lot more difficult, depending on what it is that you might have done. Or anything I might have done. Because we're too goddamn comfortable. Because we live too well off the backs of people in the third world. And that's true. The reason we can afford so many of the commodities we have, make the ones that we do have cheaper, and make luxury ones more cheaper, is because of the exploitation of the third world. And we're comfortable because of that. Third world people should never look at us and say, well, they're essentially good people, but their leadership is bad. That same leadership that they vote in time and time again. I couldn't blame any third world person for hating the first world. Because they've got every right and every reason, a million reasons, to hate us. And they should. Because God knows if I was in the third world and this was happening to me, might hate me too. Might hate the first world. So people, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what I could even legally tell you to do. Do something. Do something to stop this war. But you're never, you're never going to get it. You're never going to get that this system does it. Change out Barack Obama for John McCain, you've got the same thing. Exchange, change out Bush for John Kerry, and you've got the same thing. Hell, put in Al Gore, and you goddamn well right, it would be the exact same thing. It is not the leader who is bad. It is the system that is bad. Capitalism is not going to do anything but drive us to war. It has to. Imperialism has to take place. It has to do everything it's doing. It cannot do anything else. That is the very nature of the system itself. Come on, people. I don't want to use the tired old expression, wake up, 
take the red pill. It's, just, it's been done to death. But just get it. This system won't do anything different than what it's doing now. These wars are the very nature of the system itself. Don't vote for another party. It won't do anything. Don't listen to Noam Chomsky and go vote Obama because he said so. The system itself is wrong. There is no right man for the job in this system. Canada, the U.S., doesn't matter. Same thing. It doesn't work. What you want won't come out of it. What we want won't come out of it because it's not designed to do that. The system does work. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. You just don't realize what it's supposed to be doing.